Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. This video is part of the viewer comment response series where I respond to a comment made by a viewer against one of my videos by video. And there are two comments for this particular video and they are comments that were posted um, on the back of a reaction video where I was reacting to a video by Sophie Shohet where she was talking about various brands and whether they were luxury or not. She didn't think they were luxury brands, whereas I came in and said they definitely were. They were just a different level of luxury to Chanel that she was focused on. And the comments that I'm going to be uh, responding to in this video uh, were posted on the back of that. And there are two comments. Uh, there's a bit of overlap in some of the questions, but I'll just work through the comments and respond accordingly. I'm Anesu Sagonda, and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, or you're into luxury, but you want to focus more on quality, under the radar brands, or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, then my content is geared towards you. I do believe that Coach New York, within probably the next three years, are going to do extremely well because of the designs that they're coming out with based on their new creative director. They will compete heavily with Louis Vuitton, do you feel that their quality and craftsmanship of their leather is very good as a luxury brand versus a Louis Vuitton, Bali or Mont Blanc? To me, Hermes is king when it comes to leather, but there's something about Coach that is attracting a lot of people to this brand. I'm literally going to work my way through the comment uh, from the top down. The first bit, um, extremely well, designs, new creative director. Strictly speaking, um, the creative director and coach is Stuart Vervis. He's not new. He joined in 2013. So he's been there for a little while. And Stuart Vervis is someone with a proven track record. He's very similar to another creative director I've spoken about, Ramesh Nair, who was at Moina and then he left and um, he's now at Joseph de Clos. Proven track record in terms of coming in, reopening brands that have been closed for a while and creating designs that help to get the brand on the radar. Stuart Vervis is no different. He is well known for that. And I, I would hazard a guess and say that is why he was invited to join Coach. He has been at Givenchy. He's been at Louis Vuitton in the past. And he was at Mulberry as well prior to that. Now with Mulberry, he came in and really helped to elevate and, and bolster um, Mulberry's position in the market. He was awarded um, Accessories Designer of the Year Award at the British Fashion Awards for his uh, designs at Mulberry. And then he joined Coach 2013. 2017, again, he won another Accessories Designer of the Year Award. This time, it was awarded by the Council of Fashion Designers of America, an incredibly prestigious non-for-profit organization that's focused on really elevating American um, fashion designers and raising their profile globally. So he won that award in 2017. He's a proven entity. He's somebody who produces award-winning designs. He produces results. He's somebody who is good at their job. And so he's come into coach. He's won the award. He's pretty much transformed the brand, introduced new designs. He's added on variations to designs that were there. And he's also been instrumental in redesigning the layout of the stores. And then recently, he has been able to get coach menswear presence at New York Fashion Week. So he's very much a results oriented person who's producing results that really make a difference uh, to coach and to the bottom line. And so I'm not surprised you are seeing the, the way their profiles being raised and thinking, wow, this is an amazing brand. But the reality is Coach and Louis Vuitton are two very different levels of luxury. So the dynamics around them are very different, which leads on to your second comment. Uh, they will compete heavily with Louis Vuitton. No, they won't at all. Two different levels of luxury. Coach is very much within your everyday luxury. As you know, there's seven levels of luxury that I talk about a lot. I'm going to attach the video above where I talk in detail about the different levels of luxury. 
The first three levels of luxury, everyday, affordable, and accessible core, it's very much about price. But as you go up from everyday to affordable, affordable to accessible core, price becomes less of the first consideration, but quality starts playing a, a factor. Quality starts becoming important. So by the time you get to accessible core, which is bags that are typically priced from about a thousand pounds to 1,500 pounds, price is the first consideration, but quality is very important when it comes to accessible core brands. So think for example, Acne that I've spoken about, Boy as well. And Coach is your entry level, your everyday level of luxury. So those are bags that are priced between a hundred pounds and around 300 pounds. That's the level directly above mass market. So mass market is your Zara, your Primark, your Mango, for example, where someone is buying bags from those brands. It's not about quality and the craftsmanship. It's very much about price. Somebody who's price sensitive and they just want a trendy style. And so with Coach, they're coming in, they have a creative director who's producing award-winning, fantastic designs that people like, people are buying. He's really raising the profile of the brand. And Coach is in a level where the bags are a lot more affordable to the average person. People who like the good life, nice things, they can typically afford a Coach bag. It, it's not something that's as back-breaking to save for as you would, for example, Louis Vuitton, that is your premium core. And those are bags that are typically priced from 1500 to 3,000 pounds. With Coach, great price point. Um, it's an affordable price point, great designs, well made for that level of luxury. It's literally low hanging fruit. Somebody who wants a better quality made bag than your mass market can typically afford a Coach bag. There are a lot more bags produced within your mass market. Um, they're affordable. They're within reach of most people. But as you go up to where Louis Vuitton is premium core, fewer bags are, pay, are, are made, a lot more expensive, and it's a different profile of consumer who's buying from Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton is very much an aspirational luxury brand. And as you know, as I've said so many times, luxury is about an identity. People buy luxury um, goods from certain brands because they want to identify with whatever that brand stands for within their eyes. And so Louis Vuitton, Coach are two very different brands. The level of luxury, the, the, the quality of the leathers that are used, the craftsmanship um, of Louis Vuitton bags is very different. It's far superior to Coach. So there are two very different levels of luxury with different um, profile of people who typically buy from them, uh, different types of bags. You will find Coach will typically copy some of the styles that are doing well, for example, from Louis Vuitton. And Louis Vuitton is about producing a quality product. It's not about the price, that's the, the first consideration for somebody buying an aspirational brand, but it's about the quality and then price is the secondary consideration after that. So no, the two will not compete. They're two very different levels targeting very different consumers. And then the next bit, you went on to talk about Hermes is king. It really is king. It's the benchmark when it comes to luxury. But as you know, my channel is focused on brands that are under the radar. So I'm all about letting you know about brands that are not as well known, but in some cases, the quality is even better. And in some cases, far superior to the brands that are very well known because they're owned by the big luxury groups. So they have massive marketing spends. So they really push their products to everyone. So people know about them first and foremost. Um, most recently, I spoke about an Italian brand called Colombo. I'm going to attach the video above. Hermes is king when it comes to quality of the leathers they use and the craftsmanship, but there are brands like Colombo that source their leathers from the same tanneries that are owned by Hermes where they source their leathers. And they also produce bags with comparable and in some cases even better craftsmanship than Hermes. So I'm going to attach the Colombo video in the playlist. So as I pad out the playlist, with other noteworthy brands, you will get to see other brands that are benchmarks and give credible competition to Hermes. Second question is, which do you feel is a better luxury brand for clothes and leather accessories for men? Bali, Mont Blanc, Louis Vuitton, Goya, and Gucci. Three of those brands produce clothes for men and leather accessories, Bali, Louis Vuitton, and uh, Gucci. 
whereas Mont Blanc and Goya are focused towards leather accessories. So I'll, I'll leave those two out and focus on the three. As you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've said this before, my channel is focused on brands that are quality under the radar. That's why I really like Bali. Bali, you're buying into a brand, first and foremost, that's Swiss. And one thing, if you haven't realized this over time, is the Swiss, I would describe them as the Germans. Um, they're about precision, they're about excellence, they're about phenomenal build quality of their products. The Swiss are exactly the same, but they dial it up a notch. They are all about excellence. They are about producing the very best. Some of the biggest and best luxury um, or big brands in this world are Swiss. Think, for example, Nestle, the biggest food and beverage brand. You've got luxury watches. You have, for example, Patek Philippe, Audemars, Rolex, Swiss, um, Home Series. I'm going to be talking about a brand called Visog. And then, of course, you have Bali. To me, Swiss brands are all about under the radar. They're not into a lot of hype. It's just about the quality, the craftsmanship of their products. Recently, I went into Bali just to see what they have in store in time for Christmas. And what I noticed is there, there were quite a few younger looking pieces. They do have classic timeless pieces that transcend all ages. But I also saw pieces that were geared towards a younger audience. Um, slightly trendier, funkier, fresh, current pieces. Whereas Louis Vuitton Gucci are very much aspirational brands. They are the darlings of their respective owners. Um, Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy, and then you have Gucci owned by Kerry. And they have unique, distinct styles. They tend to be a little edgier. They push the boat out when it comes to their styles. They go over the top in some respects. And it's very much brands that are aspirational, that people buy because they want to identify with whatever Gucci or Louis Vuitton stands for. And by virtue of being owned by two of the biggest luxury groups in the world, they have access to some of the best suppliers and so forth. So in terms of the quality of their, their items, they're going to be good. But I'm more inclined as part of my channel to go for Bali that's under the radar. And the focus is on quality. When I first created the Hierarchy of Handbags series, Bali was at a slightly lower price point. Today, 2022, I would say Bali is very much top end accessible core, bottom end of premium core. Their bags are typically priced between 1,000 pounds and 2,000 pounds. They are a brand that's doing very well for accessible core, touching on premium core. The quality, the craftsmanship of the clothes you're going to buy from them, um, the material they've used, uh, the details of the construction, the fit, the wear and tear of their clothes is going to be absolutely amazing. And you're buying into the Swiss excellence and you're getting um, a phenomenal quality product that's comparable to Louis Vuitton and Gucci in terms of quality and, com uh, and construction, but at a fraction of the price, a, slow, a slightly lower price point to Gucci and Louis Vuitton. Um, they are more your trend, uh, pieces to be seen, aspirational, whereas Bali is for someone who just wants quality, understated, um, under the radar brand that uh, performs very well, looks good, it fits well, the details are meticulous, you can't go wrong with Bali. So I would always recommend Bali all day, every day, you're buying into Swiss excellence, a well-made uh, product that's going to last, stand the test of time and look amazing. I hope um, I've answered all your questions. I know you you particularly like Bali. Bali is a brand you cannot go wrong with. But if you have any, uh, any other questions, as always, let me know in the comments down below. And the rest of my subscribers, thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.